Arsenal 1, Olympiacos 2. Arsenal dumped out of the Europa League. This is your match review. Yeah, so Arsenal are dumped out of the Europa League at what? The 32 knockout phase, the first knockout phase of the Europa League competition after a 2-1 defeat at home to Olympiacos, meaning that they go out on aggregate scoreline um, of 2-2 and Olympiacos go through and away goals. Um, and I'm just going to dissect the game, basically, um, with you guys, because I feel like not a lot of people will decipher everything that sort of happened in this game. People will be quick to blame certain individuals. People will be quick to not blame others. Um, and I think there's a few issues that surrounded the game, in my personal opinion. So I'm just going to delve into that. Um, but yeah, Arsenal are out of the Europa League. Um, and I want to start, first of all, with the lineup. And Mikel Arteta, in my opinion, went strong. Uh, arguably the strongest lineup he could have could have chosen. Lacazette came in today um, for Eddie and Ketia, um, who dropped out despite him scoring on the weekend against Everton. He drops out. Lacazette comes in, um, and Bukayo Saka comes started today. Kalasnac came off uh, injured in that game and may not play again for the season. Saka Saka's in for for, for this game. Um, barring one or two, some might say Terreira's the better midfielder in than, than Ceballos. Ceballos started today. Some would say um, Socrates is better than Mustafi. Neither here or there in terms of the form. Mustafi and Ceballos have been doing alright. So, yeah, arguably, strongest lineup he could have played. And I can't look at that and say I'm angry at the lineup from from Arteta. I think he'd done what was necessarily in terms of the, the lineup today. Um, what frustrated me was the performance. The lackluster performance, especially in that first half. You're 1-0 up um, after an away goal against Olympiacos. And th there was just nothing in that first half, especially, that just showed me that you want to win this game. That you want to go through, that you want to might take a 1-2-0 lead. A couple of half chances here and there. But the impetus from Arsenal just wasn't there. And this is what roused me the most about the whole game. That you let a whole 45 minutes go without really mustering too much, without the keeper being really worked, without chances being created. And a couple of times this season we've done that. I remember against Leeds and we got pe peppered for a bit. Um, you know, we're not created, we're not creating enough. And this is my problem with Arsenal sometimes. We just don't seem to click until it's too late, or we try to defend when it's when it's when it's um, too late, um, as we'll get onto later. Um, but in the first half, I want to pick out something especially. There was a moment in that first half when Pepe ran through, um, kind of going into a one-on-one -on -one situation with the goalkeeper, and he got hacked um, outside of the area by the Olympiacos defence. Now, the referee came out with a yellow card, came out yellow card, booked um, the defender for taking out Pepe, but it was outside of the box. For me, that's a straight red. I don't even understand why there's any debate about that from the referee. Why did he even book him? The booking doesn't make sense. He was clear through on goal. The man did not go for the ball. He took out Pepe's legs. Um, and that's a straight red. Even if it was in the area, I would argue to say that he, he didn't even go for the ball. It was a straight red. But the fact that he was outside of the area means it wasn't a penalty. For me, it's a straight red card and the referee bottled that decision. Um, and that, for me, is a huge, huge turning point in the game. Um, I don't understand why it happened. Like, why? And I'm going straight... I'm not saying that's the reason Arsenal are out because I just... Dunn mentioned the reason why Arsenal were out is because of the performance. But that referee decision for me was a horrible decision. And um, Olympiacos should have been down to 10 men. Um, and Pepe, you know, arguably would have gone on to score that. Or at least it's a huge opportunity for Arsenal to, to, to go one the up. That was one of the big chances in the first half. The other chance in the, in the first half was a great ball from Xhaka to Saka. Whipped it in, from, whipped it in to Laka. Um, but it didn't actually end up being a goal because it was offside, Saka was offside. But another good move from Arsenal in the first half. Uh, one a few, couple of half chances, Lacazette shot blocked, Ozil shot blocked. Um, but we gave away a few chances as well in that first half. But anyway, we move on to the second half now. And Arsenal concede a set piece, and from that set piece we concede a goal. 
Now, stupid, stupid defending from Arsenal. We go, we go zonal. I don't know why we always like to go zonal, but we go zonal. Cool. Fair enough. That's how we're going to go. I'm good with that. I'm genuinely good with that. If you know what you want to do, how you want to defend, fine. Go zonal. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a, you have to go man marking. You have to go zonal marking. I'm cool with whatever you want to do. But if you're going to do it, do it properly. Um, and from what I saw, and I don't know the ins and outs of how the system is supposed to work in terms of who's doing the blocking, who's doing the marking, who's defending. It looked like Aubameyang was marking sort of two man, but the man he let one go. So I'm assuming he, the communication was you let a man go, someone else would catch a block off. Urzel was kind of standing in space, and Aubameyang was marking the other guy, not didn't let him run, have the run. Uh, the ball came in, went over uh, Louise and Mustafi, who kind of. Both in no man's land, of guess, marking the, the zone. But the gap they left in the middle um, between Mustafi and the, the defender behind him was obviously too much. Because my man literally had the whole of the, the penalty area, it seemed, to just head um, Olympiacos in front. So, again, another part of the lacklusterness um, in the, in the defence um, with the zonal marking is just that was, that was just terrible. Uh, from Arsenal's point of view, uh, like I said, I don't really know who to blame. Do we blame Aubameyang for not getting with the runner? Was that his role? Like, what's happening in that in that defence in that zone? Well, I don't know who it is, but as a collective, I can just put it down and say that was horrible. Horrible to watch as a fan to see that a man a man has that much space in your own penalty area in, in, from a corner kick. Cool. Then all of a sudden we want to play football. Then all of a sudden they say it's hunger. It's, Oh my gosh, we're one no down or one one lag get me to get a goal to go through, we have to score. You're at Emirates, you should be doing that from from minute one, you wanna do it from minute sixty, whatever. Start to play from minute one, you might get lucky, you might get a chance, you might get a goal. Lacazette goes forward with a couple of half chances. Terrera takes a shot, keeper saves, Xhaka has a shot blocked, Pepe has a good shot, saved, and it's like we're trying, we're, we're, we're trying to, and I credit to them in terms of they played well, they played the best, the best part of the game was after that first goal went in from Olympia because it pushed us to start playing football. And we had a lot of half chances created and a lot of decent chances, but maybe nothing, nothing clear cut um, was created there again. So that frustrates me to see why a team of this caliber playing against the Olympia because no offense to them, we should be creating more chances, at least one or two clear cut chances in the 90 minutes. I don't even know if we can recall one being that so. Um, so much so we had to go into stoppage time, into extra time uh, we went, um, because obviously scores were level, so we're going into extra time at the Emirates now. Um, he made some changes, as I said, Torreira came on, Willett came on, um, and then you know he brought on um, Martinelli as well to try and win the game. Again, created chances, um, a Bamiang half chance, uh, Couple of couple of our uh, Pepe had another half chance in there as well, so we created chances. But then, at the at the, at the back end, um, they had a shot. They hit the bar, like great shot that they had. Curling, going top bins, clip top of the bar. So, at the same time, it's like we're going forward, but we're conceding chances as well. And then, of course, the the madness, the drama, the last sort of five minutes of the game, a Bamiyang with an unbelievable, spectacular overhead kick. Um, and this is where I don't want to get onto him. The man is world class. The man is arguably, no, in fact, the man is top 10 strikers in the world, period. I don't want to hear nonsense. I don't want to hear you lot doing charts on who is. He's top 10. Like, he's top 10. Arguably top 5, but he's top 10. Um, and that goal proved why he is top 10. Unbelievable. Uh, Martinelli goes in with a header, falls to him, overhead kick, bam. And you're thinking, that's the reason why I paid the money for you. You are. Um, a god in, in, in Arsenal. We needed you this season, Aubameyang, and he stepped up every single time. And that, we have to appreciate that um, as Arsenal because Lacazette didn't do nothing today, really, in terms of showing us why you're the striker at Arsenal. Why should we then play you uh, on Monday against Portsmouth? Ed, Eddie should be starting now because Lacazette is not he's not doing what Aubameyang's doing, and he should be. Um, anyway, cool. Yeah, what we go we go one one. We think yeah, game done. Socrates on, try and see out the game. I mean, it's like, it's like the switch goes off to say, oh, we need to defend now. We've got five minutes left to go in the game. We need to defend everyone, like, everyone, like, hold fourth. So we sit back, we sit back, we sit back, concede a set piece. 
the ball gets whipped in, and it's a tap in for the man at, at the back post. You clear your first lines, but you don't mark again when the when the first ball is cleared. Get back in position and mark. Too much gap between I think Socrates and and Mustafi. Maybe him coming on confuses things. They don't mark. No one was marking anyone. It's like again, you let the man run free, and he's tapped into the back of the net. Stupid goal to concede. Another set piece. That's four goals from set pieces we conceded in the past two games. Something's gone wrong in that defence, and our technique is sorted out ASAP. And then we get to the to the last part of the game, the final minutes of the game, seconds to go. Um, the ball falls to the man that I've just described as world class, well, up there, top ten in the world, one of the best strikers in the world football. Falls to him, he snatches at it, right foot, bam, goes wide, and you think, wow, that has that just happened? The man of that quality has missed that chance. Now, again, I'm not putting any blame on him as a as, a, as an individual player. But as a striker, you got to score that. And he knows that. I'm not saying that as a, is it, oh man, he, he, he could have, could have, no, you got to score that. That's a must, um, that's a must, that's a, that's a clear cut opportunity and he must score that. And he has to take full blame for that. And I think he knows that his, his head's going to be dropped now. Um, he, he, in the interview afterwards, he didn't look like he was happy at all. Very, very upset, um, as well as Arteta. And so he should be because a man of that calibre shouldn't be missing that chance. And he knows, but why does he have to save us again? He's already done scored a spectacular overhead kick, and then man at the back want to concede goals. That's why I'm not. I'm not. That's why I'm putting this down to a lackluster performance from everyone in, in that first half, especially because you do stupidness like that and concede goals, so that you have to rely on him to do it again. Arsenal, no, we can't do it every single time. And why is it always him? Why can't um, a Pepe or a Martinelli have stepped up in that in that in that in, in that game and, 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 and grabbed the goal? It's always him and it always has to fall to him. We shouldn't be let we shouldn't be relying on him and we deserve to go out of the competition today. We do. As much as we created chances and, and probably had more chances than them, the way we played in that first half and the way we played for some of that second half and extra time, we deserve to go out today. And to sum it all up, the season's done. The season's done. This is our only hope to try and get something. I said we weren't going to win it anyway from the start of the season. Um, May United probably going to win it or whoever. I don't care. Season's done. We ain't getting top four or top five or whatever you lot think is Champions League football this year. We ain't getting it. We're lucky to get Europa. And the reality is I don't even know if I'm really wanting Europa this year. Top half finish. And we're all good. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you check us out on all of our other videos. See you soon.